Thanks for staying with us on Cinema LA. As you know, we are a partnership with the Louisiana International Film Festival. This was their inaugural year a couple of months ago. I want to show you what they're all about. Take a look at this feature. And action. This is awesome. I'm from a big city, Phoenix, Arizona, so I'm used to seeing things like this going on in events and film festivals. So it's really neat that you guys are having this here. I, I love the idea. I love it. There are festivals that have been around for 15, 20 years that don't have the caliber of films that the Louisiana International Film Festival is showing. I mean, that's a fact. What an incredible honor it is to be a part of the inaugural year for this festival. The festival programmers and the staff have really done such an amazing job of programming a very strong festival. We're now consuming movies in a solitary fashion. We're watching them on the iPad or on our phones or at home and TV. It's wonderful to uh, be part of a communal movie-going experience and really share something with, with other people all around you. They really bent over backwards to make us feel comfortable here and, and honored and to make us feel as though what we did was worth making. Two minutes till showtime, everybody, two minutes. This is a destination film festival, and we were very successful this year in completely nailing that theme. Um, and any of the people who came to the festival this year had such incredible glowing things to say about not only the, the architecture, the music, the culture, the history of Louisiana, but also the people. This year, in our very first year, we made an imprint of a cumulative amount of 4,000 people. We wanted to make sure we engaged the, the population here in Louisiana and kind of brought to their attention and interest what we're doing in terms of being able to show films before they come out in the general public. One of our co-artistic directors, Dan Ireland, founded the Seattle International Film Festival 30 years ago, and it's actually a month-long uh, festival that has over 30,000 people attend. And right now, we've made such a great impact with our local audience, our Louisiana audience, that now we have the incredible support and momentum to be able to build this festival to be like a international film festival with a distribution market, a co-production market, um, to be able to have some type of seed funding for um, upstart filmmakers, things that kind of the tentacles that develop over time with a successful film festival. So if you're a filmmaker who's always been curious about what the state of Louisiana has to provide to you, you want to come and see all the opportunities that we have in 2014 at the Louisiana International Film Festival. That will give you a great chance to be able to explore all these great locations that we have in the state, meet with people one-on-one -on -one who can actually be a part of your crew, and ask questions to people about the tax incentives and how to get involved. And of course, Cox 4 is very proud to partner with the International Film Festival. We're going to step away for just a moment. When we come back, we're going to meet Lily Kieber and her film Bayou Maharaja. Stay with us.
Welcome back to Cinema LA. We are here with Lily Kieber, and she is a now a Louisianian from a couple of other states along the way. Welcome. Thank you so much for having me. All right, you're on our first show. You're our second guest, and your film is called Bayou Maharaja. Interesting title. How did it come about? Well, the film is about James Booker, and Bayou Maharaja was just one of the many nicknames that he gave himself. Um, he was, he's quite a character. He called himself the Ivory Emperor, uh, Spiders on the Keys, the list goes on and on. A couple I probably won't say on air. But for me, Bayou Maharaja just really captured something about him. Like, I, I don't quite know what it is, but I think I do. Um, and still, you know, after three years of listening and talking and thinking about James Booker, I still, I think I know who he is, but not quite. So I like that sort of mystery in the title. I loved your take and your quote from Dr. John in your brief, and I can't do it, but can you? Can you quote it? The logline for the film, James Booker was the best black, gay, one-eyed piano genius from New Orleans. Okay. Something like that. Something like that. <laughs> that, that is great. So um, how did the project come about, Lily? Well, when I moved to New Orleans, I had never even heard of James Booker. Um, I knew, you know, Dr. John, Irma Thomas, the Neville brothers, but I just had never run across him before. And I was bartending in New Orleans, and he'd come on the jukebox, and the, the locals would sort of, you know, brighten up and tell the most outrageous stories about him. You know, I, I just had no idea who this guy was that they were talking about. And when I heard the music, for me, it was also quite confusing. I didn't really know what to make of it. Um, you know, but it piqued my interest. And the more I learned about him and the more I learned about his music, the more I felt like, how could this guy have been sort of skipped over, you know, in, in the annals of, of Louisiana music history? Um, so I really felt that, I sort of naively said, well, clearly there should be a film. <laughs> um, you know, and now three and a half years later, there's a film. So. Okay, well, uh, that is a good setup. We're going to go ahead and take a look. Here it is. Take a look at a clip of Bayou Maharaja. just playing note, chord, note, chord, Booker would play one, two, and three. So that's a very Chopin-esque thing to do, this part. He would resolve this note up and this note down. Together it sounds, that's a very sort of This is a very fr French kind of sound. And then he would add the swing feel to it. That's what he would do with his left hand. And his right hand, instead of just he would put it in octaves, you know, eight notes apart. But he, that wasn't enough. He needed some, you know, some more chords. So he would go. And that still wasn't enough. So he would do grace notes a quick note leading to a bigger note. You can do it with two fingers, but when you're doing it with octaves, you only have one finger. In addition to having other notes in the middle, and then he would roll them sometimes. So when you take this to this, It turns into a whole different kind of deal. Nothing is harder than that. It's insane. I mean, it's insanity. Booker was sort of a mystery to everybody. 
in my circle of friends, we knew who he was, but nobody knew what he looked like or anything like that. And I got a call, would I be interested in doing a gig with James Booker? <laughs> I was totally not ready for this guy. Literally, whatever he thought of, he could instantly play. I mean, his, it was almost like his hands weren't even connected to his head. So we finished the rehearsal and he started telling all these amazing, hilarious stories about when he worked with Little Richard because he played piano on some of the Little Richard stuff. And I'm probably not gonna tell any of those stories, but the gig was this really crazy black gay bar in the French Quarter. So while we're playing, he started flirting with this guy next to the piano, and his, his playing just was unbelievably magnificent while he was doing all this, but he wasn't paying attention to what he was playing at all. He was totally focused on this guy. And in the middle of it, he starts doing his solo, and he turns around, and he takes off his eye patch while he's still playing, and then he opens up the little leather bag, and he starts digging around in the bag, and he's pulling out eye patches and he turns around to me because I was sitting on his left hand side so I could watch his left hand. That was really the only saving thing I had going for me. And he, he goes, turns around and he goes, how's this one look? And I was like, I, I don't know. And then he pulls another one out. How about this one? This looks good. I was like, yeah, yeah, whatever. I'm, I'm trying to play. So he puts that one on, turns around, and then he's really going after this guy there. You know? I was like, man, this was really a scene. Interesting character, to say the least. Great look. Can't wait to see the whole thing, Lily. Thank you. I understand you debuted uh, last spring at South by Southwest. What else, you know, where else have you been? What else is going on? Yeah, we, we premiered the film at South by Southwest in Austin, which was a lot of fun. You know, music audiences especially really pick up on a lot of the themes in the film. Uh, we've showed it in New York at the, uh, uh, at the Lincoln Center. We've showed it in LA at the Directors Guild of America as part of um, Outfest. Uh, you know, we've gotten some really great reviews. Um, we just had our international premiere at the Melbourne International Film Festival in Australia. Did you get to go to that? I did not, oh, but bummer. I hear it was great. <laughs> okay. uh, sold out screenings, and that's another thing is we've had sold out screenings almost everywhere we've played. You know, so it definitely shows that you know the, these music lovers really are, are grabbing onto the film. Um, we're looking very forward to our Louisiana premiere of the film in October. Um, and then after that, you know, really hoping to bring it to Europe because, you know, as we talk about in the film, James Booker was so loved in Europe. So I'm hoping that there'll be some international interest as well. Um, and we're still looking for distribution, both domestic and international. Well, our, we've piqued the interest of our audience here in our three cities uh, in Louisiana. Give us your website so we can put it up and uh, people can learn more about the film and follow it. So the, the website is Um We also... Because I don't, I'm not very savvy with websites, um, I post updates at the Facebook page as well. So just facebook.com slash Maharaja. In 10 seconds or less, what's Lily doing next? What's your next project? Next, Lily is going to sleep for a while, get back in shape, um, and then maybe start thinking about a, a film about New Orleans dance. Great. Thank you so much for being with us. We appreciate it. Thank you for having me. Okay, well, we are out of time. If you're a filmmaker would like to appear on Cinema L.A., get in touch with us with the information you see on your screen, and we'll certainly get here and take a look at your piece. See you next time. Thanks for joining us. <laughs>